distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to speak at this important event. The key heading of the 2021 GSDV event, The Great Transformation, is also the title of Karl Polanyi classic book describing the great transformation of the first industrial revolution. Because the first industrial revolution is analogous to the transformation required to avoid catastrophic climate change today, Polanyi's arguments are consonant with present day issues. His central thesis is that self-regulating markets never work, that the consequences are so great that government interventions become necessary to protect the poor and the environment. In my remarks today, I will discuss whether Polanyi's thesis is still relevant to our efforts to foster a great transition to net zero emission, climate resilient economies, before describing GCF action to accelerate this great transition. Leaders from 192 nations committed to limit the increase of global average temperature since pre-industrial level to well below 2 degrees Celsius, while pursuing efforts to stay within 1.5 degrees Celsius in Paris in 2015. But we are not on track to achieve this. The full implementation of all the individual pledges made under the 2015 Paris Agreement is projected to result in an increase of temperature somewhere between 2.9 and 3.4 degrees Celsius. We have already reached a warming of 1.2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. This is affecting all Earth system and many human system. If we reached a 2 degrees Celsius increase, then this could wipe out 90% of coral reef and endanger the security and economic livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people. If we reach a disastrous 3 degrees Celsius or 4 degrees Celsius of warming, this will trigger very large, abrupt or irreversible changes in the climate system with possibly cascading impact on nature and human. To stabilize the global mean temperature, net global carbon dioxide emissions must decline to zero by 2050. Over the past two years, 131 countries responsible for 73% of global emissions have adopted or are considering net zero targets. These net zero targets have put the Paris Agreement's goal within reach. The carbon neutrality pledges are part of a global galvanization of efforts to limit warming, mobilize private finance to drive the net zero transition, and help vulnerable countries cope with climate impacts. This convergence of efforts is apparent in the US President's Leaders' Summit on Climate in April and just last month with the P4G Seoul Summit. These events have helped coalesce climate action leadership and build global momentum in the lead up to the pivotal COP26 in Glasgow at the end of the year. A key challenge is to translate these political commitments into detailed emission reduction plan. To do so will require us to dramatically scale up climate innovation and climate investment. Financing a rapid transition to a net zero emission climate resilient economy will require significantly more investment, investment in a different set of assets, and investment that addresses the humanitarian imperative of social inclusion and poverty alleviation. With, on the one hand, an estimated 14 trillion of negative yielding debt in OECD countries, and on the other, 26 trillions of low carbon climate resilient investment opportunities, particularly in emerging markets by 2030, capital in search of higher yields should flow from developed to developing countries to address this infrastructure investment gap. But reminiscent to the classic Lucas paradox, 
This is not yet happening. There are barriers to this flow of capital to low emission climate resilient investments. Political and regulatory barriers, macroeconomic barriers, and technical barriers. These barriers translate into higher investment risk. Entrepreneurs will therefore expect higher returns before investing their time and personal resources in climate-friendly projects. Similarly, finance providers will demand a higher margin and offer less attractive terms to protect themselves from this higher risk, affecting the attractiveness of the investment. The additional financing costs are even higher in less developed countries in which long-term projects such as low emission climate resilient infrastructure projects would not reach investment grade. We need to overcome these barriers to align finance with sustainable development. There are two public intervention approaches to incentivize the changes needed. Market fixing and market shipping. Market fixing relies on price and risk signals to create a demand for low carbon, low climate risk goods and services and shift financial flows toward climate friendly investment. To achieve these objectives, it scores on scaling up carbon pricing and promoting climate risk disclosure and taxonomies. There is a widely shared consensus in economics that in a frictionless world with perfect capital market and without uncertainty, carbon prices will be sufficient to secure the attractiveness of low carbon options for capital market. In the real world, however, the carbon price signal is swamped by the noise of other signals such as oil prices, interest rates, or currency exchange rates, in addition to business uncertainty. The capacity to set carbon prices at a higher level to cover these noises is uncertain. While market fixing approaches address information barriers for financiers, a second approach addressing a range of other barriers gradually emerged over the past 30 years to direct private investment toward low emission climate resilient development pathways. Market shipping intervenes at the level of sector policies and endeavors to create a demand for and directly de-risk the supply of climate-friendly investment to crowd in private finance. Thousands of environmental policies and instruments to shape markets are currently in use to foster climate-friendly investment globally. They are divided into five main categories. Information, regulation, economic, institutional, and financial instruments. The first four categories of environmental policy instruments aim to create a conducive business context for low carbon investment by reducing investment risk. In contrast, financial instruments tackle individual project risk by transferring part of them to public actors. They blend public and private resources, often to encourage market-creating projects that will establish a proof of concept or commercial track record for new climate solution. The structuring approach of financial de-risking instruments is usually referred to as blended finance. A common limit of these instruments lies in the fact that the higher the cost on the public purse, the tighter the public funding constraint and the lower the political credibility of their maintenance over time. Furthermore, the use of blended public and private finance to de-risk market creating investments has proven effective for mature technologies in mature markets, such as renewable energy technologies in medium high income countries but not for early stage technologies in early stage markets. 
However, experience shows that the market fixing and market shipping approaches are mutually supportive and should be deployed in tandem. The combination of the two approaches into an integrated green market transformation effort help overcome the constraint inherent to each approach. In its sense, it embeds pricing and risk signals into broader sectoral policy packages. It holds the promise to increase the overall efficiency and effectiveness of public policies and finance to accelerate the transition to net zero climate resilient economies. The mandate of the Green Climate Fund is to foster a paradigm shift toward low emission climate resilient development pathways in developing countries. To achieve its mandate, GCF adopts such an integrated market transformation approach. Let me describe how do we do it in practice. First, a word about GCF role. GCF is the world's largest dedicated climate fund. We currently manage a portfolio that is worth over $30 billion, including co-financing. And we were responsible for two-thirds of all climate finance provided by multilateral climate funds in 2020. We work across four broad areas of intervention. The built environment, energy and industry, human securities, livelihoods and well-being, and land use, forest and ecosystem. Across all of these areas, we are taking an integrated four-pronged approach to accelerate and scale up transformative climate innovation and investment. First, we support transformational planning, policy making and programming. We assist developing countries in their efforts to develop integrated strategies, planning and policy making to optimize co-development benefits between mitigation, adaptation, sustainable development and presently green climate resilient recovery packages from the COVID-19 pandemic. Consistent with a market shaping approach, we also support policy development to create a conducive business context for climate investment and provide project development finance to project proponents to remove barriers to a strong supply of bankable projects. The development phase is critical for entrepreneurs because at this stage, they are particularly exposed as they engage personal equity and take the risk of sunk cost. Part of the risk during the development phase come from the uncertain results of environmental reviews and licensing processes, bid cost and cost overruns for less mature climate technological option. This risk generate upfront cost that deter many initiatives. These barriers can be found in almost every single economy, but are decisive in developing countries. Second, we accelerate climate innovation, piloting new technologies, business models, financing instruments and practices to establish a proof of concept. Public support in the form of grant is essential for the incubation of novel ideas, as is equity for startups, since other solutions such as bank loans are difficult to obtain for innovative ventures. To address these barriers, GCF and KDB, the Korean Development Bank, are, for example, exploring a joint initiative to support incubators and accelerators in Asia. Consistent with a market fixing approach, GCF supports to innovation can include the development of new valuation methodologies to better assess the benefits of low emission climate resilient infrastructure projects and transform them into a new class of assets. These new methodologies enable investors to balance off risk associated with higher upfront cost of climate resilient infrastructure with their lower operational and maintenance cost and lower 
climate physical and transition risk. GCF can also support the emergence of climate markets, such as carbon offsets, to strengthen price signals. Third, we mobilize finance at scale. Consistent with a market shaping approach, we use scarce public resources to de-risk market creating projects and crowd in private finance to deploy new climate finance solution at scale. GCF is one of the top five providers of blended finance. A key objective of the fund is to make blended finance work better for early stage technologies and in early stage market. To achieve this objective, we are experimenting with new forms of blended finance using more innovative instruments such as equity and guarantees and not only the more traditional forms of relatively safe senior debt. For example, the GCF supported subnational climate fund is a first of its kind public private equity fund investing in new climate solutions at the subnational level at scale. Almost half of the 42 participating countries are least developed countries and small island developing states, the most vulnerable countries to climate change, which are most often overlooked by private equity finance because of perceived higher risk or lower long-term market opportunities. To unblock private investment at the sub-national level, including in seeds and LDCs, this new fund will leverage $150 million in first lost equity from the GCF to mobilize $600 million of less risky senior private equity. By assuming a large share of the risk, we enable institutional investors to explore new asset classes. And finally, fourth, we are working to develop the capacity of domestic financial institution to support the widespread adoption of new climate solution. Sharing knowledge of commercially successful innovation and enhancing the climate risk assessment, disclosure and financing expertise of domestic financial institutions. For example, there are almost 260 public development banks in developing countries, representing 5 trillion in assets. These national and regional development banks have the capacity of extending more than $400 billion in climate finance per year. Doubling their investment capacity or leverage effect will be enough to bridge the infrastructure investment gap. However, only 58 national development banks in developing countries are accessing international or domestic capital markets to capitalize their operations. Consistent with a market fixing approach, GCF supports the efforts of many NDBs across the world to acquire the skills and tools to assess and disclose the specific risk associated with their current portfolio, assess investment in new climate technologies, identify the most appropriate financial structure for this climate investment, and access international and domestic capital markets to finance them. In conclusion, in the absence of policy intervention, the financial system will not be able to redirect private capital on the needed scale for the required great transformation, as predicted by Paul Yi. The policy intervention needed to increase the economic viability and bankability of climate-friendly options must maximize the complementarity of market fixing and market shipping approaches. GCF is supporting integrated green transformation initiative meeting the unique requirement of each country. GCF is eager to actively engage with the academic community to share its empirical evidence and refine its approach. I have no doubt that GSDV 2021 
will prove a milestone in achieving this objective. Thank you very much for your attention.